All right, so one of the questions that's come up uh, in a couple of my other videos where I've talked about taking data from Microsoft Forms and plugging it into uh, SharePoint through Power Automate is handling choice questions. So I wanted to do a little bit about that. Um, single select choice questions are actually pretty straightforward because they are basically they come into the data from the form comes into Power Automate as text. So it's very easy to just throw that into either a text field in SharePoint or a single select choice field. It's when you have multiple well, multi-select choice questions on a form and multi-select choice columns in SharePoint that things can get a little bit complicated. So we're going to take a look at both of them and show you some of the tricks to work around that. Uh, so first off let's take a look at our scenario. So in our escape planning site um, we have a list, you know, we created a list called schemes because we don't want to track the different schemes that people come up with. Uh, so in this particular list, we have a field for the title. We have a single select choice column for the type of scheme. So is it an escape scheme? Is it a disruption? Is it a revolt? Uh, which of those is it? It's going to be one of those three, only one of those three. Uh, but then we have a scope column which is a multi-select, and you can see that based on the little multi-check boxes there, uh, because schemes might be scoped to an individual, or a small group, or a large group, or any combination of those three. So we want to be able to properly record the scope. Uh, so what I did is, uh, now right now, because this is a list in our team site, only the members of the team have access. But we want to open this up for anybody else in our organization to submit a scheme that they want us to consider. So I go ahead and I set up a form, appropriately named the Scheme Submission Form, with the name of the scheme, text question, type for the, you know, to map to the scheme type column. So we have escape, disruption, and roll. It is kind of important that the values, the choices here, match the choices in that SharePoint column, otherwise you can run into some trouble. Um, and that, that is kind of one of the downsides of doing things this way is that if you later add a, a type of scheme here and don't add it in the SharePoint list, you can have problems where data is not being recorded because it's trying to feed a value that's not correct. Um, but you know that's that's another argument for another time. And then we have our scope selection, which is again a multi, multiple answers choice question, just like our multi-select choice column in SharePoint. All right, so what I did is I created a flow, which is going to run when that form is submitted. So the trigger and get response details, that's pretty much standard for any other um, flow that runs when a form is submitted. So what I want to do is I want to create an item in SharePoint. So I'm going to add an action. Create item. And we're going to select our escape planning site and our schemes list. And then it's going to show us the columns from that. So we've got title, we've got scheme type value. Um, and because scheme type is a choice column, this is, you know, basically we can set it to one of these or we can enter a custom value, which is what we're going to do when we get there. And then we have the scheme scope value, but you'll notice this looks different than this one. And that's because this is a multi-select choice column. It needs to be in an array format. So this is sort of the, in Power Automate, this interface is how arrays are entered. So I can say, you know, select the first item and then add a second item, but I don't want to make these static. I want to get the values from that form or from that question on the form. So let's delete that. Uh, but let's just plug in our values here. So we're going to create our item. The title is going to be the name of the scheme. Scheme type value. We'll select custom value and easy enough just type because that's single select it's just text in here let's like let's enter a custom value and just select scope 
and cross our fingers and hope that it knows magically what to do. I'm going to hit save. And okay, it's ready to test. I'm going to go over our form and let's preview this. And let's say our first scheme is. Um, Peace day, sit in protest. And that's going to be a disruption. And let's say it could be an individual or a small group. And submit that. And go back over to our list here. Refresh the page. All right, we got our sit in, peace day, sit in protest. We've got the scheme type of disruption, but this scheme scope. Well, that doesn't look right. Let's just, just for the sake of argument, let's see what that should look like if we were to select disruption and individual or small group. So it should look like this, but it looks like this. And that's because this value that's being fed in here is essentially, it doesn't match up with the, with the proper array format. Uh, and I don't know what you actually call the format. Let's, let's just go into our flow run history and take a look at what that data really looks like. So let's open that one up, go into our response details, and there's our type, which is, again is just text. But here's that scope question response. And if we especially look down in the body here, we'll see that that's, you know, square bracket backslash quote, it's kind of ugly. I don't know what you actually call this format. I'm calling it a pseudo JSON array, but I'm probably wrong. But whatever the case is, whatever it's actually called, I may not know what it's called, but I know how to fix it. So let's let's talk about that. Essentially, what we need to do is we need to use the JSON expression to take this value and convert it into the proper array value. And I'm going to click Edit here, and we're going to open up our Create Item. Let's see what that array, the shape of that array, the form of it needs to be. So I'm going to X out of that, and I'm going to select just Individual here. And then we can use this button to switch to the Array View, and we can see this is the format it's looking for. It needs a key value or property name of value and then the actual value. So shouldn't be that complicated. What we need to use though is another step. So there's there might be a way to do this without using another step, but I'm going to show you how to use do it using another step called select. So we're going to add an action in here and we're going to look for the select action. Uh, this is becoming one of my favorite uh, actions to use because I find myself working more and more with arrays of data and select can is really a multi-use uh, action inside of Power Automate for working with arrays. It's kind of the Swiss army knife of array for arrays. Uh, but I'm going to rename this to be clear and we'll call this select scopes. Now what I need to do is take that scope value and convert it into a basically clean it up to create a proper array, a uh, proper JSON array. So I'm going to go to the expression tab and JSON to use the JSON expression and go back over here, plug in scope and OK. Now in the map here, I know that I need that property name to be value easy enough. And over here, when we convert this from whatever that format is into a proper JSON array, we know that it's just going to be, you know, value, comma, value, comma, value, comma. So what I want is the item. And that's simply the expression is item. It's really that, that simple, that's straightforward. Uh, now down here in our create item, I'm going to blank all that out. And because it's expecting an array input, it's showing us the only thing that is an array in any of this. And that is the output of that select action. So the select action takes an array, does something to it, and gives an array back. 
So that's what we have to plug in there. So let's save this. And I'm just going to test this by rerunning the same. Actually, no, let's, uh, we'll submit another form. Let's submit another response. And let's call this a uh, tunnel under guard tower. And that's an escape scheme. And it's either going to be a small group or an individual because it's not a lot of space there. So I'll submit that. Oh, it's going to ask me to sign in again for some reason. All right. And if we go back over to our list, refresh. Okay, for some reason that didn't happen, didn't go through. So let's try that again. Tunnel under guard tower. Let's escape. Individual, small group, submit. That time it worked. Hey, there we go. Tunnel under guard tower, individual, small group. Beautiful. That's exactly what we want. So now we don't have that ugly square bracket quote mess. Uh, and this is a proper, it's actually mapping them the the choices selected on the form to the choices available in that column simply by using json and a select action to clean up that array so hopefully this was useful to you uh, if you are using multi-select questions on your forms and having this kind of issue this should help you straighten that out in your lists um, if you have any questions throw those in the comments down below Thank you and have a great day.